Hey friends, Dean here. Before we get you on to your episode, I want to take a moment to invite you to our next virtual online trivia night. Wednesday, May 13th at 8 p.m. Join us either on our Facebook group or on our YouTube page for three rounds of fun trivia, music questions, movie questions, general knowledge questions. It'll be a fun time and a chance to win some prizes and have just a good relaxing night uh, of some trivia at, at home. You don't even have to go out for it. So don't forget, Wednesday, March 13th at 8 p.m. Join us on our Facebook group or YouTube for three rounds of fun virtual online trivia. We'll see you there. In this quick hit, we're taking a trip back to the 1989 Grammy Awards. And the winner for Best Hard Rock Metal Performance is... You didn't think I was going to spoil it right away, now did you? Stay with us. You're listening to a 3324 Podcast Quick Hit with Dean Legiro, where Dean shares stories and trivia about his favorite chart hits, actors, movies, and more. Welcome, friends, to this week's 3324 Podcast Quick Hit. My name is Dean Legiro. Thank you so much for joining us. We're on social media, on Instagram and Facebook at 3324 Podcast. The big favor you could do from us is if you like our content, please share it and spread the word. We would appreciate it. Okay, let's get busy. Originally called the Gramophone Awards, the first Grammy ceremony was held in 1958, and the awards are presented by the National Academy of Recording Arts and Sciences, NARIS for short. With the rap and metal genres not really represented before, and both gaining in popularity, the 31st annual Grammy Awards were notable for a few reasons. It saw the inclusion of these two new categories to be voted upon, Best Rap Performance and Best Hard Rock Slash Metal Performance, and notable also for the winner in the latter category. The nominees for Best Rap Performance were a veritable who's who of popular artists at the time. DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince for Parents Just Don't Understand, JJ Fad for Supersonic, Cool Mo D for Wild Wild West, LL Cool J for Going Back to Cali, and Salt and Peppa for Push It. DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince took the first award home, and there was a fair amount of criticism that the award presentation was not televised, first off, and some felt that more qualified artists were not recognized for their achievement. Say what you will about DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince, at least they were in the rap category. The Hard Rock Metal Performance category nominees were also a who's who of hard rock and metal artists. ACDC for Blow Up Your Video. Cold Metal by Iggy Pop. Nothing Shocking by Jane's Addiction. And Justice for All by Metallica. And Crest of a Knave by Jethro Tull. Yes, Jethro Tull. If you're not familiar with the band Jethro Tull, you more than likely have heard a few of their songs on classic rock radio. Aqualung, Locomotive Breath, Living in the Past, and Cross-Eyed Mary are just a few to check out, and I'm sure you'll find at least one of those probably familiar. They were formed in 1967 as a blues, rock, jazz, fusion band. Tull had, over the years, fused all those elements into a style of music that would eventually become known as progressive rock, taking their place with other prog rock icons such as Yes, Genesis, Rush, King Crimson, and Pink Floyd. Suffice to say that Tull doesn't really fall into the hard rock or metal category, but There they were among the nominees. Under the best circumstances, Jethro Tull was a long shot to win this award, especially when stacked against the other nominees. The chances were so slim that their manager told them not to bother even to show up to the awards ceremony as it would be a waste of time. So they didn't. It's a good thing they listened to their manager because the first Grammy Award for Best Hard Rock Metal Performance went to Jethro Tull, not Metal Stalwarts ACDC not hard rock icon Iggy Pop, and not even the heavily favored to win Metallica, releasing what would be their most successful album to date. When Alice Cooper and Lita Ford announced the winner, boos were heard in the crowd. When asked about the controversy, Jethro Tull leader and composer Ian Anderson simply stated, well, we do sometimes play our mandolins very loudly. Metallica later added a sticker to subsequent releases of Injustice for All, reading... Grammy Award Losers. The backlash was quick and pronounced, so much so that in the following year, the two categories were separated, and in 1990, Metallica would win the first of three consecutive Grammys, 
And with their win in 1992, Metallica drummer Lars Ulrich took a little jab at Jethro Tull, thanking them for not releasing an album that year. Oddly enough, Jethro Tull actually did release an album in 1991, but it seems the Academy learned their lesson. Metallica would go on to win six Grammys in the metal category, and things would stay this way until 2012, when the categories would be merged once again, but only for two years when they were split in 2014, and Best Hard Rock Performance was renamed to the much simpler Best Rock Performance. Let me be clear, there's nothing wrong with Jethro Tull. They made a lot of great music. They were just in the wrong category at the wrong time. This has been Dean with your 3324 Podcast Quick Hit. We will see you on the flip side. This has been a 3324 Podcast Quick Hit. You can find us on your favorite podcast provider. So please like, subscribe, and rate to become a part of the 3324 family. Your feedback is important, so please make sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook at 3324podcast and on Twitter at 3324p to join the conversation. 